Hi, everyone. It's Professor Dingman, and I wanted to do uh, a walkthrough lecture on the essay, uh, the research essay, um, taking a look at a student sample. Now, keep in mind, like some of my student samples, this is a partial draft, so I'm not showing you this person's entire paper, but I am going to show you um, a section from each of the major sections that are required for this paper. So let's start off at the top. Um, as always, you'll notice MLA. This is proper MLA formatting. Okay, student's name, my name, class title, date, headers in the upper right-hand corner of each page with the student's last name, and the page number. Okay, don't forget that's required in MLA formatting. And if we go all the way to the end of the paper, um, should still see those headers. Okay, the one thing we don't have in this is a work cited, but that's because everybody's work cited is going to be different, but it should still follow um, MLA formatting and guidelines. Okay, notice they have a title here, centered, not bolded, not underlined, not highlighted, right? Nothing funky or different. MLA is very straightforward. So let's get into um, the essay. And I just want to go over the structure really quickly. Um, you'll remember from the outlines um, that we're starting with the introduction, which is going to include a summary of orange is the new black. Um, and then we're transitioning into the background of um, the your, your specific prison problem. And then um, it's up to you where you're going to put the thesis. Some people put the thesis at the end of the summary section. Some people put the thesis at the end of the background section. Um, so I'll leave that choice up to you. It's more of a style choice and where you think it fits. And then moving on from the thesis, then we're going to get into um, body paragraphs and the conclusion. Okay, so let's start back up at the top here. Can prison be a meaningful experience? That is something that is unheard of, as prisons are normally considered horrible places for horrible people. However, drug conspirator Piper Kerman, after receiving a one-year prison sentence, was determined to get something worthwhile out of prison instead of succumbing to the indignity and lack of freedom in prison. Piper Kerman is a young white American woman who graduated from Smith College and not knowing what to do after graduation and thirsting for adventure, Kerman was intrigued by a friend, Nora Jansen, who told Kerman of the glamorous and exotic places she had visited in the course of drug smuggling. One day, Nora asked Kerman to come along with her on one of her trips. Kerman was hesitant, but she ended up accepting in order to satisfy her curiosity and her thirst for adventure. Thereafter, Kerman went along on every trip with Nora since that first trip turned out successfully. Eventually, Nora asked Kerman to officially smuggle money and drugs on her own, making her a part of the team. Kerman smuggled money, but never actually smuggled drugs, only because the first time she was told to smuggle drugs, the bag of drugs never arrived. Kerman took this failed attempt at drug smuggling as an omen and decided to discontinue this illegal activity. She moved to San Francisco, found a job, and met Larry, whom she would eventually marry. Her life was progressing successfully until 10 years later, out of the blue, police knocked on her door, presenting a summons to go to court for drug smuggling and money laundering charges. After successful persuasions of reducing her penalty, she was sentenced to a year in the Danbury Federal Correctional Institution, a prison for women only. This began a year where she was determined to change herself rather than wallow in grief for her situation. What Kerman gained in prison was personal insight into how the U.S. prison system is failing, and she then chose to portray the inmates as humans, not monsters or animals, and to expose the problems within the prison system. Okay, so let's get back up here to the top. So we see the first thing is the hook. So it's still following the traditional pattern, hook, elaboration, bridge, thesis. Okay, um, I have my comment out here that I don't think it's the most engaging hook, but it does pose a question and make the reader think. And if you look at the, um, the elaboration, it's attempting to answer the hook, right? Can prison be a meaningful question, experience? That is something that is unheard of as prisons are normally considered horrible places for horrible people. So we can see that they're addressing the question here in their elaboration. They're not just running away from their own question. Um, and then this is actually a pretty good summary. The rest of this paragraph, it's brief, but it's really good. Um, and like I said in the, in the prompt, keep in mind that 
the reader has not read this book, so they need some summary. Uh, and this does a good job. Notice that it's the big kind of pieces of the book, right? The overall plot without getting into nitty gritty because um, your audience just needs to know the background, right? How you're getting into this topic of prisons. And then notice here in that instead of ending with the thesis, this person has chosen to put the thesis at the end of the background section. So what they do is they, they put their sort of transition sentence, a bridge sentence here that connects orange is the new black to their specific prison problem, right? Now they're transitioning into what they're gonna talk about, what their research focused on. In Piper Kerman's memoir, Orange is the New Black, she details her 15 month sentence in prison. Kerman shares with readers an insider's look into the day-to-day -day operations of America's prisons, the lives of incarcerated individuals, and she describes the myriad problems in the American criminal justice system and the prison system. Every year, tax-paying Americans pour millions of dollars into the U.S. prison system with the belief that these prisons are punishing and rehabilitating convicted criminals. What Kerman shows us, however, is that the U.S. prison system is almost exclusively about punishment and the rehabilitation efforts are almost non-existent, and if they do exist, they are largely ineffective. Prisoners leave with little to no job training or skills, little to no education, no health care, mental or physical, and they now have to carry around the label of convict. What happens to these prisoners when they are released? Most of them end up incarcerated again because they do not have tools to change their lives and re-enter society as a productive citizen. Essentially, Americans are spending their income supporting a system that does not work. America's prison system is in need of major reform, and one place to start is within the prison. In order to truly rehabilitate incarcerated individuals, the prison system itself must be rehabilitated. Though some believe that they should exist solely to punish inmates, prisons need to rehabilitate them by treating them like human beings, and by giving them skills they can use when they transition into society outside of incarceration. And this can be accomplished by treating prisoners humanely, hiring staff who are committed to reform, and providing prisoners with job skills and education. Okay, so overall, really strong background section. So like I said, they end their summary by transitioning into this sort of background, right? And they're bringing up, okay, still talking about Orange is New Black, it's a day-to-day, -day. it brings up the problems, Right, and now they start getting into why it's a problem. Okay, right. Um, it's a problem because we're saying right here, we pour millions of dollars into the prison system and what we're finding out is it's not really that effective. Um, our recidivism rate, meaning the number of people who end up right back in prison is really high across the United States and specifically very high in California. So obviously what we're doing and pouring our money into isn't an effective system. Um, so I like here, um, this is a place where I have commented out to the side. Um, this is a good place to incorporate research. Um, like I said, what are those recidivism rates? They're saying most of them end up in prison. What do we mean by most of the people, right? Again, specific numbers, that's, that's data that you can find. How many people across the United States go end up back in prison and how many people, how many people in California end up back in prison. And then here is where they drop their thesis. And you can see that it's a clear detailed thesis that it clearly identifies what this person is going to cover. And they even address the opposition a little bit here, right? Though some believe that they should exist solely to punish inmates, prisons need to rehabilitate them by treating them like human beings and giving them the skills they need when they um, re-enter society, right? And then what? not only are they giving us their specific point, right, that prisons obviously need to rehabilitate prisoners, they're giving us specific points. So they're saying this is how the prison should reform so that they're um, rehabilitating people and they're laying out their points, right? Um, by treating prisoners humanely, hiring staff who are committed to reform and providing those prisoners with job skills and education. Now we're going to get into um, our specific points. All right, so we're going to go with this point here. The example that we have is hiring the staff, right? hiring staff who are committed to reform. So we can see there's a clear topic sentence. Prison reform is necessary because even the best, most lenient prisons like Danbury employ staff members who are not committed to helping inmates. 
So this is a clear topic sentence that connects back to the thesis, right? It comes right out of the thesis point, hiring staff. Um, and then you'll see the first thing that they give us after their clear topic sentence is um, an example from Orange is the New Black. And that's something that you'll want to do if you have an example, um, is to, to use an example from Orange is the New Black and then start using examples from your research. In Orange is the New Black, Carmen notes that many of the staff members, whether bosses or teachers, showed little commitment to rehabilitation. One instructor she nicknamed Stumpy, quote, was an adequate, adequate excuse for an, a teacher. Um, his attitude toward his pupils was simple. I don't care if they never learn that. One plus one equals two. I get paid for eight hours of work, end quote. Um, and note proper citation, last name of the author, page number. Um, so they drop their quote. Now remember when you drop a quote, you don't just get to run away from it. You have to analyze, explain, uh, argue, right? You have to make commentary about it. And that's what they do here. So examples like this demonstrate a need for better services starting at the level of employing quality staff members to help inmates in a genuine manner. Stumpy's attitude, while terrible, is actually benign when compared to abuses committed by prison staff at other institutions. So I like the point, the transition here, right? They're comparing Stumpy in Orange is New Black to some other examples pulled from their research. And here's one of their examples. In February of 2018, Six correction officers and one former officer were charged with sexual abuse of female prisoners at the Lackawanna County Prison in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Not only was this abuse taking place for years, but Josh Shapiro, the Pennsylvania Attorney General, also explained that the abuse was, quote, common and widely known within the prison, where guards alerted one another if supervisors were approaching while they were having sex, end quote. And then we have um, the citation. And this is a last name because it may have been a resource where there wasn't page numbers, like on a web page or an online article. These men engaged in rape and torture of these women because incarcerated individuals are easy to victimize in the current system. The correction officers control all the power within the prisons. They can make life even more difficult for the inmates by doling out punishments such as time in solitary confinement or loss of privileges like family visits. While the prisoners know that this abuse is unjust, cruel, and criminal, they rarely report these abuses because they fear the repercussions. Because prisoners are not reporting, the abuse has continued. However, it is not the only the inmates who are remaining silent on this issue, but the staff themselves. Okay, so let's go up back here, right? So again, they dropped the quote about um, what was going on in Pennsylvania, and then they're commenting here, right, that this was rape and torture because of the position of power that the guards hold. Okay, and now they're transitioning into another point, right, that it's not just the inmates who don't report abuse, it's the guards themselves. In the article, Guards Gone Wild, a self-report study of correctional officer misconduct and the effect of institutional deviance on care within the Texas prison system by Robert M. Worley and Vidisha Burrow Worley, they present a study they conducted describing correctional officer misconduct. The study consisted of self-reported responses by 501 employees of Texas, prison, of Texas prison employees, with Worley and Worley concluding that, quote, based on the data, our findings indicate that respondents were likely to perceive high levels of institutional deviance during the course of their eight-hour shift. Okay, so they um, set up the background of this too, right? They give us the article, they give us the title of um, excuse me, the title of the article, the authors, and then they explain a little bit about what the study was about, right? Um, a self-reported study of those Texas prison employees and what they found out. Now, here again, they're dropping their commentary and analysis. Here's their quote. Now they're analyzing that quote or explaining how that quote fits in with what they're claiming. What Worley and Worley are saying here is that the employees themselves see and acknowledge that the staff are engaging in wrongdoing. If America wants to improve the behavior of inmates in prison and help them avoid repeat offending, then it's critical that prison employ, employees model proper behavior themselves. If the system is designed to treat inmates humanely, then society can expect that treatment to affect how inmates perceive themselves and others, meaning the inmates themselves will fail to see the humanity within themselves and within, and within others, making it likelier for them to re-enter the prison system. Part of treating incarcerated individuals with dignity is by offering programs, such as job training, 
so that inmates leave with a better sense of self-worth and with employable skills. Okay, so then they're moving, transitioning from their commentary about the um, the Texas correction officers or Texas prison staff report, and then they're explaining why this is important, right? Why they think um, that the employees of the prison should model that proper behavior for um, the inmates themselves. And it turns like pretty philosophical here at the end. I really like the commentary that they're making, right? If they're not treated as uh, individuals and we're not showing them how much to value and respect others, then how are they supposed to show that same respect? So it's an interesting point that they're pulling up here. Okay, so then what we have here is just um, the next topic sentence, just to show you, right, it, that at the end of your um, one section, you could be writing a transitional expression that moves you into the next topic that you're going to discuss. So right here at the end, they're saying uh, another way, right, another way to um, treat people with dignity is to offer them programs that help them um, improve their self-worth and employable skills. And then you can see right here, prison should seek to create environment and programs that will lead to positive transitions back into society. And one great way to accomplish this is by job training, right? So it comes right back up here to this notion of job training. So we're ending this section and starting the next one about the job training. That's a good way to kind of create that flow. If you've ever been told that your writing is choppy or it's lacking flow, this is the technique, right? Um, is to transition with a concluding sentence that previews the next paragraph, that previews the next topic sentence idea. Okay, and then here we start this person's conclusion. Okay, so now you've seen their introduction section, right, with the hook and the elaboration, which is a summary of orange is the new black, and then they kind of start bridging here with the background section. They're explaining what their prison problem is, transitioning from right the book Orange is New Black and all the problems overall to their specific prison problem, okay, which ends in their very clear thesis that identifies the problem and lists the sections out, lists their points out that they're gonna be discussing in this essay. And then that moves straight into the body paragraphs, right? Starting with, again, clear topic sentences that connect back to the thesis points, using multiple examples from Orange is the New Black and the research, okay? And then writing these nice concluding sentences that function as a transition from one idea into the next. So now let's take a look at that con conclusion. Like I said, we were looking for um, a repetition of the thesis and the significance of this topic. Piper Kerman's ex prison experience was not the typical experience. Most prisoners don't come from middle-class white family that, from a middle-class white family that values education. Most prisoners don't have an Ivy League education. Most prisoners didn't have years while free to work on their case with a private attorney. Finally, most prisoners don't have jobs, families, friends, and opportunity waiting for them once they are released. What most prisoners do face is total punishment all day, every day, while they're incarcerated, looking forward to the day when they're released, only to find out that they're not done paying for their crime. Their lives will continue to be punished because we have failed to actually correct or rehabilitate these citizens. And that word, citizens, must mean something. We cannot forget that those incarcerated are mostly American citizens, not others. Okay, so, so far, really strong um, conclusion. Right, uh, and you'll see here, this is kind of like a natural transition into the conclusion by bringing up the fact that Piper's experience wasn't the typical experience. Um, notice the repetition that they did here. This is intentional repetition. This isn't accidental, right? Um, and what they're trying to do with this repetition, most prisoners, most prisoners, most prisoners, most prisoners, right, is set up that stark comparison between Piper and all the things that she had that made her prison experience less awful, normal people don't have, or I should say the, the types of people that normally go to prison don't have, right? They're lacking all the support systems that Piper had. Um, when we look at that, that means, right, that Piper is less likely to reoffend. 
she's less likely to go back to prison because she has all of these things, right? The family, the Ivy League education, um, a fancy lawyer, right? Job, family, friends, support, opportunity. She had a job waiting for her. Um, that's not typical of what most people experience when they really are released from prison. So this person's doing a really good job of introducing this issue, right? And explaining um, that since most people don't have those things, maybe we should consider giving them those things while they're in prison so we can reduce the likelihood that they'll reoffend, end up right back in the system. And we, the taxpayers, have to end up paying for that over and over and over. Okay, so let's get back to this. Their lives will continue to be punished because we have failed to actually correct or rehabilitate these citizens. And that word, citizens, must mean something. We cannot forget that those incarcerated are mostly American citizens, not others. Now we're getting into the restatement of the thesis. While critics argue that prisons should only function to punish inmates, prisons must be more than that if they hope to run effectively. Prisons need to rehabilitate inmates by treating them with dignity and by providing skills that inmates can use when they re-enter society. To start true reform, the prisons must do the following. Engage in compassionate and humane treatment, employ staff who are dedicated to make inmates' lives more successful, and provide inmates with job skills and training and educational programs. Okay, so restating the thesis, very clear. You can go right back up to the top and match um, their original thesis and this one up together. It's not a copy job. It is a restatement, and it's good. And then they're going to jump back into the so what. The idea that prison should rehabilitate criminals and make them more productive may go against the way many people, especially victims, feel about crime. So I like that they're addressing that, right? This is a lot of people have a problem with this. However, prison reform is a human rights issue. If we fail to see everyone, even criminals, as human beings, we fail just a little bit to be fully human ourselves. Um, great clincher. I like this, right? I think it's such a good, um, again, philosophical question looking at the very nature of humanity and who we treat as human, who we treat as less than, who we treat as others. Um, I think it's a good, a good point that he brings up. Like I said, also, addressing the opposition here, right? This fact that it does rub a lot of people the wrong way. It is really hard to wrap your your head around trying to provide um, care and services to people who have committed crimes when people who have done nothing wrong lack education and healthcare and job opportunities. Um, but then they're bringing up this issue of, right, was it a human rights issue? If we treat them um, like garbage, does, doesn't that make us garbage? I don't know, it's a great question worth asking. And I think it's, um, a great way to end an essay like this, where you're ask, where you're looking at prison reform, and, and also don't remember, don't forget what you're trying to do here is you're trying to um, make an argument, right? And I think this is a good way to get people to continue thinking about your argument and try to kind of to write, um, make them really focus and think about what it is you're saying. Okay, so again, like I said, this is not the complete sample, and you can see some other samples that I provided for you guys in the essay module. I encourage you to look through those and to pick them apart and see what you like, what you don't like, what's working, what's not working. Um, and of course, if you have any questions or concerns, um, please feel free to shoot me a text or an email and I'll help you out. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.